This is part two of a short series where we look at plants that climb. In part one, we looked at why plants climb in the first place and how the common grapevine swings around little tendrils to find things to grab. Now, we will take a look at additional creative climbing mechanisms that Earth's flower has come up with. The most common climbing mechanism appears to be twining, using petioles or stems to wrap around an external support. Reminiscent of exploring tendrils, these stems are very flexible at the tips and swing around in circles in search of support. This behavior was also described by Charles Darwin. Once they encounter an external support, they call it around it and squeeze it with considerable force to prevent slipping off. The wisteria is an example of a twining vine that has gladly enveloped my balcony where a common grapevine had more trouble. It has twined around the railing, wooden beams and even tried to use my chair as a trellis that cheeky vine. While I adore the magical aesthetic and the foliage and flowers it provides for insects, I do always have to keep it in check just enough to keep it from breaking anything. After all, it can also beautifully twine around itself. One great advantage of twining over other climbing mechanisms is that it allows for the largest span of support diameters. Well, with one exception. Adhesive roots or tendrils with adhesive pads allow plants like the English ivy to climb virtually any support. They do this by secreting a substance containing polysaccharides and proteins that allow them to stick to almost any surface. However, the trade-off that these plants accept is reduced mobility between supports, leaving them often stuck to, for example, a single tree. This contributes to how the environment can select for specific climbing mechanisms that are able to thrive there. Also, the first known published report of the climbing figs adhesive pads was by, you guessed it, Charles Darwin in 1875 in his book on climbing plants. Prehensile branches are certainly a more inconspicuous climbing mechanism, as they resemble tendrils or twining stems but are less specialized, without any structural modifications other than temporary or late developing leaves. And finally, regarded as the simplest climbing mechanism, or sometimes even something separate, scrambling involves plants leaning on other plants or a trellis. This is a more passive climbing mechanism that is great to save energy. Scrambling can occur with or without hooks, grab nodes, spines, prickles or thorns. Without any such aids, it is referred to as simple scrambling. Cleavers have both prickles and hooks on their leaves and where the leaves branch off, and they attach so well to many rough surfaces that me and my brother used to throw them at each other so that they got stuck in our clothes. Nowadays, we only use them for shenanigans if we find one already severed for some other reason, or if we were to forage them for food or medicine. Climbing plants have specialized so much on climbing that their survival, their growth, and the form that they take on have grown dependent on the availability of external support. To reach sunlight for cheaper and escape dangerous herbivores in the process, many plants have evolved creative ways to climb practically anything, be that bricks or sticks. Check out the full post in my blog linked in the pinned comment below.